I have brought you guys outside today. Um, I, Jamie and I are renting this Airbnb that's uh, in a basement that is really dark <laughs> and it's really cold too so I just felt like it was the middle of winter in there and um, I just had to get had to get out so here we are we're out just a warning there is a railroad track behind me and it's also an airplane path and there are two roads and there are people so I know I never have um, like quiet normal <laughs> videos like everybody else <laughs> where you can just hear me um, so bear with me I had to I had to be outside um, and so what I've been doing lately as you guys might know is planning an event uh, on the 23rd of September in Toronto I'll be having a book launch uh, combined with an art show. Now I know, I know I already did a book launch. I did an online book launch for The Art of Talking to Yourself in mid-June. Um, and so this is going to be kind of an in-person thing. I wanted to, you know, just get people together and just do it in, in real life. And I also wanted to showcase some art. Now the art's not going to be mine. Um, I'm going to have some canvas prints and some prints with... Actually, I brought some to show you. I don't have the canvas prints um, yet, but I do have the little photo prints that I'm going to be uh, selling. So it's just like quotes from the book, so you guys might see um, the stuff that you see of mine on on Facebook. So like this. They're like little 5x5 five five, um, photo cards that you can put up on like a fridge or on a wall. Um, I think these are going to be these are going to be really cool. And then I have canvas prints of the same thing. So that's as artistic, as, as, as visually artistic as I'm going to get. But I found some Toronto artists who, uh, whose art is along the same lines as, as the book, which is pretty cool because I have always just been, I've had an easier time expressing myself with words. And whenever I've seen people describe the same concepts in uh, in visual art it just fascinates me because I look at it and I say oh my gosh I can see how that uh, means that but I would have never come up with that image myself so it's exciting but it's also super stressful <laughs> like I am uh, I don't think I've slept properly since I started planning this um, about a month ago and uh, I've been meaning to make a video for a while and I was thinking, what would I make a video about? Um, I'm just so like all over the place. And so I decided to make a video about this because strangely enough, as I've been, uh, people have been asking me like, what are you doing? What are you working on? Um, I told them this is what I'm working on. And then people say things like, um, oh, I don't know how you do that. or. Uh, oh, you're so, like, brave, or you're so, like, motivated. They just say all these things that um, suggest that there's the, there are these, like, positive qualities within me that are not inherent within other people that make it possible for me to plan this event. Or maybe they think that I'm um, super happy and joyful about it all the time. So I wanted to make this video, and I don't even know if this is going to be inspiring, but I just wanted to be real for a second about what it's been like. Uh, it's been really stressful. So <laughs> there have been so many problems, like just little problems. So for example, um, I've uh, made some posters to put up like around the town for the book, which are awesome looking, right? And we'll oh, that's upside down. Um, they look great, right? Yeah, except this one actually has the wrong time on it. Um, it goes from five to 11. It used to go from six to 10. And now it goes from 5 to 11, so half the posters have the wrong time. I also have flyers that are like mini versions of mini versions of the, of the posters that also have the wrong time. So that was, um, that was interesting. As I got the prints, a bunch of the prints are uh, not actually sellable. I mean, it's, they've got like the white print on a black background. Anyway, it, they just didn't come out as I had planned, so I have to follow up with that. And um, just arranging everything and getting it together, it's been like really time consuming. Uh, I think I've been doing like 12 hour days and maybe you guys are used to doing 12 hour days, like seven days a week and working that much and that's normal for you. Um, that's not really normal for me. <laughs> and uh, usually I have, when it comes to work like this, um, just kind of tedious rote kind of things, then I usually have like a maximum of three to five hours of that that I need to do in a day and then I try to leave the rest for uh, like creativity or like my clients and definitely for for self-care and so having that much work 
right? Like designing the prints and having all the color modes. And I can't even tell you what it is that I've been doing, but there's, there have been things to do. And dealing with all the problems that come up um, has put me into this heightened stress state, right? And I'm not saying that I'm running around like ripping my hair out, but um, stress actually the word uh, comes from, it's like an architectural term for when there are too many cars on a bridge and like how many cars can be on a bridge before the bridge comes buckling down. And so I've had a lot of cars on my bridge um, and it's been really intense. Yeah. And I also feel the intensity of the effect this is having on me because immediately before I started planning the event, um, I had, so I had published The Art of Talking to Yourself. You guys know about the, the weird spine leaking onto the cover, or cover leaking onto the spine issue. Um, I've told you all about that. So after I quit stressing about that and I said, okay, whatever, it's printing how it's printing. Then I had this amazing time where I only had to do maybe like two to three hours of just normal running a business stuff every day. Um, on certain days I could just miss it. And the rest of the time I spent like going for walks and writing poetry and going dancing and seeing old friends. And I was literally writing every day, um, I, at least once a day. I mean, a poem would like fall out of me or I would write a blog post or and it was just amazing. It was like this amazing heightened uh, creativity time. And so I'm not usually that unoccupied, right? Like usually I have more work to do than that, but I have a lower client load right now uh, because I was writing the book, editing the book, publishing the book. So I didn't have as many clients. So I came out of that. I didn't have as many clients. I had all this time on my hands and I just filled it with being creative and you know it's not like I sat myself down and forced myself to be creative like the creativity just started coming out of me and so then when I started planning the event um, it was an interesting contrast because I was unusually unoccupied and now I am unusually occupied and I see this kind of contrast within um, what is happening inside of me and the first thing to go was the sleep like I just started not sleeping properly um, and I would lie down and I just couldn't sleep for the first two hours and uh, you know just my thoughts would be like blah, 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 blah. let's think about everything that you have to do and then I would kind of even when I would calm down and then I would get to this place where I'm not even thinking anything of, that I have to do I'm just kind of like trying to watch my body and I'm in there and uh, it's like this kind of no man's land, this this trench in between sleep and not sleep. And I know that place very well. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have ever had insomnia, but I struggled with insomnia a lot when I was a teenager and um, that would happen to me. I would just be stuck in this place where I'm not sleeping and I'm not not sleeping and I'm not really doing any of the things that you're supposed to do or not do to do either one. You know, it's uh, it's it's hard not to get frustrated <laughs> in that place for like hours on end and then I would just like wake up really easily and then even like two weeks ago uh, I started getting nightmares and then after the nightmares I started uh, I don't know if this happens to you guys too apparently I have like sleep issues but I get like dreams embedded in dreams so I am in a dream but then I think that when I wake up I'll be somewhere else than the place I actually am so that's another layer of the dream but in the dream that's embedded within the dream I'm lucid dreaming I don't know if sorry there's a bee um, and so I start trying to like control my uh, dream that's within the dream but then I and I always think that I'm waking up out of it but I'm waking up into this like half reality because it's not actually reality because it's like a dream within a dream Anyway, I've had experience with that too, but that's been really intense for me as well. And uh, I remember there's this TED talk that I think I shared on my page a while ago, and it says how to make stress your friend. And um, I can't remember who it's by, but it is a brilliant viewpoint, right? She says, the only reason that stress affects us in a negative way is because we think of stress as a negative thing. If we just start thinking of stress as a positive thing and we see, okay, so my, uh, my heart's beating faster, my blood's rushing, I don't know if I can actually feel my blood rushing, but whatever, like my face is getting redder, I can feel like my body is getting ready for a situation that I'm going to have to face, right? And yeah, that perspective for sure can help you not be stressed about being stressed. But by the same token, um, there are like actual effects from having 
from being busy all the time that I'm experiencing right now in my own life just because there's such a contrast between those two worlds. So no matter how much self-care I do, and I still, you know, I still work out every day, I still um, take care of myself, right? There's not enough of that that I can do in order to make the sleep issues go away at this point. <laughs> and so um, I've kind of relaxed about that. I'm like, okay, so uh, I guess I'm just not going to be sleeping well until the event comes. And I've had to lay off of it because if I keep trying to fix it, that's just going to stress me out more. And that's been an interesting, an interesting development because it's, it's reminded me of other times in my life where I've experienced sleep issues. And that's always been when I have like a big project or there's a lot on my plate and uh, you know to a certain degree I think that's just how it's going to be right and my job is to make sure that my entire life isn't like that and uh, I don't know maybe start planning earlier or there's a lot of things that I'm learning obviously out of this situation that would make it less stressful to plan an event next time but there are a lot of tasks and there's also a lot of inner work like I'm terrified right um, I've had events that I've planned that have not gone well. I have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money into this. Uh, so seeing like my credit card rack up uh, into the four digits of what it's taken me in order to put this event on, and seeing like my energy, I can just see like my patience, patience isn't what it was, and um, I can just see my energy like when I'm running, you know, when I get to a certain point like it used to be, I would get tired. Like when my knees would start hurting, I would be like, oh, okay, I guess it's time to like go home, right? <laughs> and now I can feel like my legs start to get tired, like my body's got this kind of tiredness to it. Um, and all of that's like, it's real, you know, like dealing with the inner stuff and the outer stuff, like it's all real, you know, and it's all part of it. And I'm no braver than anybody else. Um, because I'm still experiencing that, right? Like, it's not like I got to this place where I was like, oh, I am fearless and now I'm facing it out of this, like, fearless place. Uh, it was literally the same that it would be if you went to that place where you say, okay, one part of me, so like the inner child part, part of me says, oh, it would be cool to put this on, it would be, it would be fun, like, this is something that we want to do. And then there's the other part, uh, you know, like the inner adult that says, okay, here are all the practicalities of what it's going to be like to put this on. And so let's figure those out. And then it becomes this interesting conversation where uh, the child part is like, oh, okay, I guess this isn't actually as fun as I thought it was going to be. This is a lot more work. This is a lot more stress. This is a lot more intense than uh, what I thought. Then, hello, puppy. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by a dog. Um, so it's like, this is not going to be as, as fun as I thought it was going to be. And so then it just becomes this like interlinking conversation between those two parts, right? And constantly trying to um, fulfill the need, like the initial need of, okay, I want to do this. This would be fun. This would be great. While not letting that logical adult part dominate like my entire existence, right? So for example, with there being the wrong time on the posters and the flyers, the adults like ah you know everything's over but you know being able to like me not being the adult or the child me being the person that watches these two parts of me says okay is this something to get freaked out about yeah it's 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 a problem but it's not a huge problem and when i've even when i've been flyering and i've been putting up the posters i've noticed okay the font on the posters is actually not big enough and i've noticed that about other posters like oh, okay when you make an event poster then i think you have to make the font bigger because uh, the posters are not actually visible from certain points of view and so then the adult part of me is just like ah you know that's it's wrong and like yeah to a certain degree it's wrong but that's a lesson learned and that hurts you know that's painful like you can read all the personal development stuff that you want that tells you um, just look for the lesson and look for the lesson and look for the lesson and I am absolutely a fan of that but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt you know it doesn't mean that it doesn't feel like um, pardon my language, but it feels like shit to be wrong, you know? It feels like shit to do the wrong thing. It feels like shit to, like, you know, put all this time and effort into something and then realize, like, oh, okay, I should have thought of this other thing earlier. Nobody likes that feeling. Um, but, you know, I think you just get used to it. You get used to its necessity. You know, <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, that, that's the feeling that comes with it. So, 
I, I guess I kind of compare that feeling to um, I'm a huge fan of, of working out and when so yoga for example is something I've been doing for a long time and in yoga there are specific kinds of um, pain and discomfort that are not something that you need to back off from right it's just a necessary part of it so a lot of uh, uh, sometimes it's annoyance like I think when I get into my hips a lot of the time, there's uh, annoyance, frustration, irritation, and uh, that's really different than if there's like physical pain saying stop. You know, if I feel annoyance, frustration, impatience really, like, oh, can we just get out of this uh, pose faster because this pose is uncomfortable? That's a place to stay in, right? And it doesn't feel good. Like there's no... Uh, I mean, you could try to reframe that in your head and tell yourself that it feels good or it is good for you. And maybe it is good for you, but it does not feel good. It is not a pleasurable feeling. You know, people are not going to go and pay for somebody to inflict that feeling on them in order to get the feeling of pleasure. If somebody's going to pay to get that feeling, it'll be because they want to grow, because they want to progress as a person, because they think that it's necessary to their development as a human being. But no, it doesn't feel good. Right? And a lot of the stuff that I'm going through right now, um, it doesn't feel good. Like, it doesn't feel nice. And it doesn't exactly feel nice to wake up in the morning and, like, spend an entire day uh, feeling like pain and fear and stress. And, like, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Right? So, what's it for? Right? Like, what's the point? Um, and I think the point is that I'm growing through that because that's something that I said that I wanted. And one thing I've learned is that if I don't do the things that I say I wanna do, and I've told myself that I want this a bunch of times, like I brought this up, I've tried to convince myself out of it by saying, oh, we could just go to a bookstore and just like do a reading at a bookstore and then it'll be easy. You don't really have to plan anything. The bookstore takes 50%, like it'll just be easy. And I thought, okay, and I even started planning that for a while, but I was like, no, I want to do, I want to do this, you know, I want to do like a proper book launch with a place that I rent and I want to have art there and I just want that. And I kept telling myself that. So if I hadn't done that, then I would always, I think idealize that scenario in my head, right? I would think, oh, this thing would have been so amazing. And my ideas about how amazing it would have been, um, would have likely distorted it because it's going to be good. I mean, I'm sure that it's going to be great, but it's not going to be like the best thing that's ever happened to me, right? I mean, I think I have those moments every day. You could just smell a flower and have it be the best thing that ever happened to you. So that's one, one part of it is going for the things that I tell myself I want makes them real and then makes me not sit there daydreaming about doing them, right? Because I'm just like there in reality playing with reality and not making a hero out of some future situation that I feel like I can't access. And I think the other part of it is that I get to face a lot of things, right? I mean, my um, I can tell that my perfectionism has definitely taken a turn for the better throughout this process. I can see that, although I still get these thoughts that are like, ah, you know, I can let it go a lot faster and it doesn't um, come back as many times. So that's that's been interesting. Um, but I still see how I, I procrastinate, uh, I swear that's a word, I do so many things at the beginning, like I don't want to leave anything to the last minute, and so I just like push myself to do all this work, and I treat myself like a workhorse, and I notice that, like, oh, okay, I put all this stuff on myself, and then I think, it's okay, I'll be able to do it, I'll be able to, to do it all, and, uh, and then I start like ignoring some of the start ignoring some of the symptoms of okay I need to back off I need to take a day off so today for example I was I went flyering and postering yesterday and then today in the morning I was like let's go let's do another day and that's my immediate reaction to be like let's go let's do it and then another part of me is like uh maybe we could do that tomorrow like I just want a day off because it was actually kind of fun yesterday um I found like so many vegan places in Kensington Market while I was doing it and had some conversations with some people. I mean, it was actually it was actually enjoyable, but doing it day two, uh, push, 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 it might not be that fun. So I still had that conversation though, right? Like I still try to talk myself out of, no, nah, you don't really feel that bad. And I noticed that, so I've been doing that to myself this whole time. It's like there always has to be a conversation. I'm like, no, Veronica, go, you can do it. And uh, the other part of me is like, no, I think, I don't really think we can do that right now. And uh, 
that's an area of growth for me, right? That's, I mean, I think the conversation this morning about what we were going to do was a little shorter than it was when I first started planning this event, like maybe a month ago, right? And that's me growing in all those ways. And that's an amazing opportunity. It's also an amazing opportunity for me to face some of those fears that I have around planning events because the one thing I've noticed is that when I look back at what I've done with past events I haven't actually put my entire effort into making them as good as I can and for somebody who is like a recovering perfectionist I should be able to take all that perfectionism that I put into like school projects and cleaning Uh, cleaning a place or doing a project for someone else and you think that I would be able to put that intense like perfectionist energy into doing something for myself but I also have had a tendency to not use that on my own stuff as a weird self-sabotage like I would send out emails that weren't properly uh, that I hadn't checked for grammar I would kind of put out put out stuff that I'm like whatever that's it's good enough it's good enough Um, when really uh, another part of me said but if you would take the time to um, not try to make something perfect because nothing can be perfect but to perfect something you know the same way that like an artisan would try to perfect a piece of art if I would take the time to do that when I'm cleaning a bathroom or when I'm doing something for somebody else why wouldn't I do that for myself right i've done i've i've had similar experiences with food like when i'm making something for somebody else like it used to be that i would take so much time and care but with myself i would literally just slap it together and get this like anxiety about just wanting to get it over with and that was a journey i had to go on right like taking time with preparing my meals and so i realized that about this event planning that this is the first time i think that i've planned an event and i've really put as much effort into this as if I was doing it for someone else as if I was doing something that I really believed in you know and I have this feeling like that's gonna that's gonna reflect on how it's gonna go right it's gonna reflect on how the event is going to turn out but I also noticed that putting that much time and effort and resources like especially time and money um, into something that I really want to do it brings up all of these like what if no one comes like what if no one buys anything and uh also uh this this thought doesn't really have words on it but this feeling of like why are you inflicting this on yourself veronica like why are you doing this to yourself this is not necessary right i'm putting myself into this position like some people like the government repossesses their home and they would be under the same amount of stress as I have been for the past month and uh, maybe that wasn't fully within their control but it was fully within my control to like step into into this situation right and going through all of that day to day like I can't tell you that self-awareness has made it easier per se but I am definitely learning a lot about how I act automatically and what my own specific personal journey is from my automatic reactions to the kinds of reactions that I want to take, right? So I am working on self-love and I'm also working on being more gentle with myself while also pushing myself in the way. So I wanna be more gentle with myself in the same way I would be with others, but then also push myself when I do work for for me um, in the same way that I would push myself to do work for other people so it's not just one answer like I'm not always trying to be more gentle like sometimes I am trying to go harder in certain situations but my own journey of how how do I become more loving to myself how do I grow through this experience Um, I can't even 100% tell you guys you know I think it's each moment it's each little choice like this morning uh, when my brain was like, go, go do the postering, being like, no, actually, I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to do something else. And it's that one little choice, right? And it's not like I can pick apart that choice and, and take a rule out of it. Like, oh, okay, so in all situations, whenever you feel like doing A, you should always do B. Um, it's not that easy, right? But 
I guess I try to think of stressful situations like that little, you know, the band that a nurse puts around your arm um, when they're taking your blood. You put the band on and then your veins swim to the surface and then you can see what's in there. And that's what stress has been doing to me. Um, I also have realized um, that a relationship that I had with somebody in my online life was extremely toxic and it just wasn't, it just wasn't working for me and I had tried my best to... Um, I had tried my best with this relationship and it was just causing this pressure on me. Uh, every couple months there were just this extreme pressure would kind of out of nowhere. And so this person kind of made their way into my life while I was stressed about this event. And in that moment, I realized how much stress that person was creating on a low boil. If I was not in the place that I am right now, because I feel like I'm, I have a heightened sensitivity to any kind of pressure, Maybe I wouldn't have done this, but um, I've taken a huge step back from that person. And I'm really grateful for the gift that stress has given to me, right? I mean, I can see little things that, you know, I could just brush off and say, okay, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. Um, right now, because I'm really sensitive to being drained, I suppose, because I'm like doing so much, I can see more of what's draining me and that's a huge gift. I mean, that's amazing. It's just been an amazing journey of learning all those lessons. Yet, it feels bad. And it was difficult to start, and it is still difficult, like, every day. Um, and I guess I, I get kind of, uh, I don't even know what the word for it is, but I, whenever people t tell me what I am, you know, people are like, oh, you're so courageous, or... You know, it's so great that you can do these things and I can't and um, I guess it just makes me feel frustrated uh, because I'm not, you know, I'm not braver than anybody else. I haven't been sleeping, you know, that's not very healthy. I'm not like the health queen um, and I don't have the answers to it all, right? Like I try, I try to be self-aware, try to be self-loving, but right now, um, it's really hard to be that and I'm just gonna do the things that I really want to do anyway even though it's really hard and that's all that I can do right I can try to do the things that I'm asking myself for even though there are obvious repercussions there are obvious consequences and some of them feel really bad but this is the kind of feel bad that I'm okay with because this is what we need you know sometimes we just need to experience pain for the sake of growth because at the end of the day there's no comfort in life even if you're in what people call a comfort zone um, that comfort zone comes with its own very specific uncomfortable feelings right there are those feelings of wasting time of uh, missing out on wasting your potential the the physical um, ramifications of not going fully into like your physical body of like having like a comfort zone with with your body uh and not pushing it further there are physical repercussions for that not pushing yourself into your fears there are there are emotional repercussions for that and that is uncomfortable you know and so yeah i am in my own um i remember my dad once said to me that i like to make things hard for myself so yeah okay i'm making things hard for myself and um this is an uncomfortable situation that I'm in right now but nobody's comfortable even the people in their comfort zones are not comfortable they're just experiencing a different kind of discomfort and you know what I will take this discomfort I will take this discomfort of reaching for a higher for a better version of myself and facing the things that a part of me feels like I just can't do you know and trying to prove myself wrong um, so if there's like an outcome of this video that has become way too long it's that if there's anything that you are afraid of doing or you feel like you're not ready to do or you feel like you're not a hundred percent like you don't have all the resources or uh, you are feel like oh all these negative emotions are gonna come up I don't have enough time um, but you really want to do it stop waiting because the the moment when you feel like you're ready and you have all the resources and you're a hundred percent the person that you want to be before making that change or going for the thing is not coming it's not coming on its own if it does come it will come after all the crap um, after all the hard work after all the things that you do in order to try to um, 
meet your own goals and meet your own standards, if that feeling of, okay, I know that I can do this will come, it will come after you have done it. You will know that you can do it after you have survived the impossible, you know, bone breaking task of actually doing it, you know, and you might have tears on your face, you might have blood on your face, you might have sweat on your face, you know, and you might feel like you were never ready to do the whole thing anyway. But when you've done it, on the other end, you feel like, okay, I did that. And now I know I can. And I think we, I'm not really sure where this story comes from that we should feel like we are ready before we do the things. And um, I think some of self-help is responsible for that, unfortunately, trying to cultivate like a mindset of, um, and I guess I just don't take that, that perspective. I've never felt more confident about my abilities to do something until after I have done something that I didn't feel like I could do and just push myself through it and held myself through the hard moments and push myself through the moments that I didn't feel like I could make it and been my own most loving and toughest like coach right and partner and mother and father and friend and on the other side of that that's when I think we our self-concepts grow and then you say okay now I can do this and you know by the next time that I make a video for you guys um, I'll have done it and I'll be a little bit different than I was in this video and that's a beautiful thing you know hopefully I'll be sleeping better my god um, <laughs> except for that you know I'll be someone who knows that I could do that and I will have done that and that's that's cool you yeah. know so um, yeah, I hope that me sharing my disastrousness at the moment has been somehow motivating and not just like horribly depressing to you. Uh, please let me know what you think. Yeah, and if this has inspired you to start your journey, start your very imperfect, messy journey of something, please let me know because it really makes a difference to, for me to know that um, showing up at these moments, that it matters. Okay? Hey, thanks for witnessing my process. And, walking with me and thanks in advance for all the beautiful comments I know that you guys are gonna make. Okay. Thank you. Uh.